everybody crazy. And uh, I would peel it off, but then so that one peels off pretty good. I didn't want to rip all the rip up the. It's gonna the tape will be an aggravation. Oh well, I didn't want it to look ugly like that. It is just a cardboard box in the garage, though. That tape will just keep on sticking to you and peeling and doing this and that. <laughs> Did it again. Okay. Oh, that one's broke. Well, that's not the best box ever. I thought that was a real good box to do that with. You know what? You're a bad candidate. We get boxes every week, so I don't think that's an unusual size. I might as well start with one that's not, when I do it, I might as well start with one that's not uh, ripped or anything. And there is one thing I'm kind of considering. That box is about four to six inches taller than the other one. And my mom's only five foot two, and she wants to get something out of there. She'd probably not be able to see in there to get it. So I might want one more this size. Oh, but this one's really getting to where it's about to fall apart. It's about had it now. It's pretty handy, actually. All the it's like when you had all the bottles and things we used to just stack on there. When you had to work on it, you can just pick the whole box up. Did it just, you know, just because we needed a place to stick that junk when we were working on it one time. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. Let's just leave that in there at least for a little while. Next, and It's been a few years now. <laughs> and it's been real handy. And you don't have stuff falling off of there. You used to try to move it with all that stuff standing there. And, of course, every time you moved, moved it a little bit, stuff would fall off. It was a real aggravation. So... Put our chair back. That you're taking off your taking off your dirty boots chair. It's real hard. It's a cool old chair, but it's real hard. Doesn't feel good to sit on. And I have two back there by my desk for the garage, and then I have mine in my room and a couple more in the other rooms in the house, so we don't I got them off the curb neighbor, put them out when they were remodeling. Same time I got that desk that I have back there. When I got it, I was thinking I'd use it for a workbench, but it was so nice. I, well, I do use it for a workbench, but not like I was going to. I don't drill and saw on it and all that sort of. Well, I filled it up with old computers, you know, and my tools. All my tools are sitting on it. So you can't do that now anyway. Toolboxes are sitting on it. Some of them not. All, the one with the ratchets and everything. Okay. Uh heating up. I can feel that. Y'all, I forgot. I won't be out here very long now because it's getting hot in here. So, uh, I know it works. So, I think I already showed that before with how it'll, it'll yeah, you open the door, it'll stop like it should and it doesn't, the heating helmet doesn't come right back on like it was doing. So, uh, I'm going to shut down the video. I'm done breaking and fixing stuff. And uh, uh, I'm going to have to order, I think what I'm going to do is order one of those uh, round brush things with the, they have fiberglass arms that they're each about three or four feet long and you just keep putting them another one on there to go further and further and they're flexible. Uh, so I don't know if they can turn that 40, uh, 90 degree angle, but uh, I can take that. I can take have as much of that pipe off inside here if I need to. Uh, one way or the other, I think that's the best way. The best way would be to go from the top down and shove all that stuff down. And, uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure there's going to be plenty in there because if that, that's a pretty stiff cable. It, it should have not been stopped by any, by no, you know, it shouldn't have just stopped by, uh, scraping to get some, a little bit of it on the side. It, it should have been pretty, pretty. And I kept turning it and seeing if I could get it to, go a different way and it, it never would go through there so and I it, I saw white look fluffy looking stuff and it, when I first started seeing the white I thought it was just reflection off the pipe but then I finally figured out 
once I've got the light to where I could tell some of it, look, you know, down at the bottom, I could see pipe. Then as soon as I got in there about eight inches, that's all you saw from then on is white. And then it got to that point about four or five feet in where it stopped. And uh, like I said, if I did it in the daytime, I would have light coming down and I might not even needed the light on the camera and I might have been able to see pretty good what was going on, but I didn't, didn't make it. I didn't feel good enough to get out there earlier today, but anyway. And I fumbled around, even when I came out. I fumbled around because I wasn't thinking straight. Broke that day. But I'm back to business now. All right. Uh, dang it. Banging into stuff. I put my hand on this trash can that this is sitting by, and it bumped that camera. Yeah, and I really want to get me... I've been putting it off for years. I really do want to get me a... Uh, I don't think I want a regular tripod. I've used... I've used really good regular tripods with fluid heads and used kind of cheap ones and a lot of things I don't like about the cheaper models, the legs and the way they work and the, and the ones I got now, you know, so many of them will just break and be but just about useless unless you figure out how to repair them these days. So I think I'm going to look at, I haven't really looked, but I saw a video, real good video on all the different ways you could use uh, light trees, light tripods. For, uh, and some of them will go up 30 feet in the air. I never thought about that. I don't think I want to go that high. I don't have enough cable to go that high, but this high, a little higher. I, it's, I'm 5'11". It's probably 6'2", six, 6'3", six, right now. If I get up another 6 inches, this one, the, you, you, you see how it wobbles. Go any higher and it, well, before it wouldn't stand up, but now I've figured out how to get the legs out wider. You can adjust it. You can adjust them, but they wouldn't stay in this spot where they are. But I put a set of baby vice grips on top of there. There was probably a clamp that years ago that came off of it. This was my buddy's dad's, <coughs> and it was for a light. I'm always talking about the light. I wear that light. It's out here. I'm always talking about it. Let's see. Okay, I'll grab it right quick. Uh, I think it's plugged in. It's plugged in and it... Are you in the picture? Yeah, there you go. Pretty good light. This is, these were good lights, you know. They used them from everything from work lights to... Uh, folks, photography lights. So I don't know what he was using it for. He had him in a recording studio. He was a he was an old jazz musician, and he uh, had a Gibson Les Paul from the 50s model Gibson Les Paul, and uh, he uh, 1956 or something like that. One of those ones that are worth money now, and it's well used. <laughs> but he uh, but he did, he kept that, but uh, I wouldn't dare. I, I, if he tried to give it to me, I probably wouldn't take it. But uh, uh, I did get to see him play once. You could tell he was a good jazz musician. Of course, he was 70-something, 80. His fingers didn't work too good anymore, but you could tell. But he was in bands for years and years through the... Let's see, I'm trying to think. He died in the early 2000s, and he was 75, 82 or something back then. So he was in the real original jazz movement, played all over, you know, all over in clubs and stuff. And he had set up a little four-track uh, with reel-to-reel -reel re recorder, a little studio in one of his bedrooms, and uh, he had a little three-bedroom townhouse. And my buddy lived with him at, for quite a few years, but he didn't grow up living with him. He grew up with his mom, but uh, uh, I don't know exactly when they got divorced, but you know. Uh, so anyway. Uh, and I got to, that's how I got to know him pretty well for several years. I don't know, maybe ten years, five years at least. But uh, I used to go over there, you know, to hang out with my buddy and help him work on his truck, stuff like that. But uh, so that light, that light is uh, that's like all, all. Well, that's what you saw when I was a kid in the '60s going up. That's what everybody had. My grandpa, that was what we had for work lights, and they're good. Uh, you can break the bulbs really well. The old incandescent bulbs, if you bump them real hard, it'd break the bulbs. Just like the drop lights. <laughs> this one here is one of the old original. It doesn't want to come out from that where I had it. Come on. I was hung on that toolbox. 
This one here, it washes out the uh, video so much. This is plastic from the 70s. But the bottom part, it, it used to have a metal. The, the, when they used to actually make good drop lights. Um, this was rubber, but I don't know, maybe it's because it got so hard when... I, it was in the garage when I was a kid. And it has two plugs on it, and they're the two wire plugs. So it's not just a drop light, you know, it's an extension cord too. And I've used it for, well, ever since I was a kid. But uh, I had bought two of these plastic ones, and they're terrible. They, It's been doing pretty good lately, but, but it flops open if you just get near it. But it's better shock resistance with the plastic than the... I took the metal one off and put the plastic one on here, because every time you just do it like that, it would break those incandescent bulbs. Now, this is one of those fluorescent spurly bulbs and uh, they'll break too if you drop it and I want to try the LED bulbs because they might be uh, we were out of them I was going to put one in here because they don't get near this gets hot enough to bother you it, it, it doesn't burn you when you grab this the, the regular bulbs I think I put 100 watts in there or something 75 watts it was melting that so uh, I think even a 60 watt might melt it so that, this was these were crap and I actually don't think I have any more of the handle and all that. They all broke. And yeah, I think this, I have another one over there, I think, that might could be repaired, but they were so crappy, I just, and when you're working on the truck, it's really aggravating. That's opening all the time, and you're hitting the bulb on stuff by accident because it's open, and, or to fly up in your face, you know. So this is the one I end up keeping, and I think, I know I still have the metal part somewhere, somewhere, but so if the, if the LED bulb didn't break when you tap it, I would put that metal one back on there. Cause, oh, and it would get so hot, it would flat burn you uh, with those incandescent bulbs. That's the regular bulbs before they got... Kind of, before the, everybody started using either these or um, LED bulbs, before they started making those LED bulbs that would screw into regular sockets. But, uh, yeah, I bought some LED bulbs that are... Uh, I decided to... I, I don't know if I even... It looked to me like the ones that we have are, there's one right over there, it's kind of a yellowish light and it doesn't really light things up well. Everything looks dingy and I think those are soft white, what they call soft white. So I got the, uh, day, I think they call them daylight. I'm afraid they might be too harsh and hurt your eyes, but the, I, I don't know that I don't like these anymore. There's, there's another one over there. There's two more over there and that one over there. It's, it's too bright to look at. It's one of these. But these are really actually can be dangerous. When they go out, they start shorting out and they blow some terrible smoke, but they also, they scare me. Uh, so uh, they just make them too crappy. And so I don't want any more of these anyway. But uh, the LED bulbs, I'll see how they work in here. And if they don't break when you bump it or drop it on accident, then that'll be good. They won't get so hot. And, uh, Cord, the, one, the the original cord. Well, that's actually not the original cord. The original was, I think it was one of those old. Uh, this is a gray cord off of something I put on here that was only about eight or ten feet long. It's too short, really, to be good for much. It's real stiff. Now, it, it wants to fight you. And then I got some. Oh, that orange cord that's down there. I won't show it. You've seen the orange cord. It, I spliced them together to make it extra long. And that was from the original orange drop light. And there, that part, that cord's okay. It's the right kind of flexibility and everything. But I left this on here for the extra length, even after I realized I didn't like it too much. But, uh, yeah, it fights you every, move, every inch of the way. Those uh, original two pieces of my... Drop that. The original two pieces of my heat and coil are in there. That's that's like a plate reverb. It makes noise when you bump, bump it. Now, I don't know how loud that dryer is going to be in my recording. This mic's pretty good about canceling out background noise, but that's pretty loud. It's starting to bother me, like noise fatigue, so I need to get out of here. And I just remembered the heat, too. So I'll stop jabbering and uh, go. All right. Bye-bye. Dryer works.